Alright, so this is my Minijet Avenger. Uh, it's built with a hull from Minijet Inc. Uh, located in the Ontario, Canada area. And a Sea-Doo Spark, 2014 Sea-Doo Spark is the donor uh, where the engine and the pump came out of. And I wanted to do a quick uh, video with some questions and answers for questions I had during the build. Um, maybe help people out doing a similar build. Um, some of these questions might be mini jet specific or potentially Sea-Doo specific or Sea-Doo spark, Sparks uh, specific where they just might be general mini jet. And uh, this is my first mini jet build. Um, so some of them are going to be pretty basic, but they're just questions that I had during the build process that might be able to help someone else out. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is the UHMW on the bottom. It's half inch UHMW. Um, and what the bolts, well, first off, my question was bedding, uh, no bedding compound necessary. So I didn't use any, um, second, uh, was the bolt spacing. So, um, mini jet said 1.5 inches from the edge minimum. Um, and then four to six inches spacing around the edge. So most of these are one and a half inches in and four to six inches across. Um, and then on the inside, <laughs> such as further down in here where I was uh, not on the edge and they were spaced differently, um, 8 to 12 inches. So these distances here would be like 8 to 12 inches. Uh, and that's my bolt spacing and I'll put some pictures up of um, it upside down during the build process. All right, so the next questions have to do with the cooling system. Um, I had two. One was the elevation and, and uh, of the various components if the elevation mattered. And so the reservoir, uh, so, well, this is a CDU um, engine, so it's closed loop cooling. So there's two circuits. One is a water circuit coming off the pump that cools the uh, closed loop system, which is just antifreeze uh, or glycol um, circulated through the engine block. So for the elevation, um, the reservoir needs to be the highest point, and I think that's pretty standard. Uh, and then that goes back to the heat exchanger there, which is a little bit lower than the reservoir. Uh, and I think I've got most of the air bled out of it, so I think I'm good there. And then the other question I had for the cooling system was the order of components. And uh, <clears throat> it was, number one, the high pressure off the pump goes to the sand filter, which comes out and goes into the heat exchanger which comes out and goes into the uh, exhaust manifold, which then comes out here and exits the boat on the side. So another big concern during this build was noise and I wanted to reduce it as much as possible. Uh, so the exhaust system, um, I couldn't fit the uh, stock resonator in here. Uh, but so I made this custom pipe and really the only tip I got there was that put it as low as possible in the water so I have the exhaust pipe exiting the very bottom um, as low as possible and and there's the exit um, on the back side so my other questions were about steering and if I needed a gearbox or I could use mini jets uh, kit which just uses kind of a cam lever uh, and a cable system I ended up going with mini jets kit and I could not be happier with it um, it was for the most part bolt on and it comes with all the brackets and adjustment that you need so this is a mini jets kit it has two bearing blocks and the shaft and everything that just kind of bolts in and then so my other uh, steering question had to do with cable length and this is a 10 foot Avenger haul and this is going to be very specific to a 10 foot Avenger um, 13 feet uh, cable to go through the gunnel and 12 feet to come up through the floor I obviously went through the gunnel um, so the cable comes around this side uh, goes down and exits the transom down there and I'll show you the linkage on the back side so here's the steering on the back side, and it exits the transom there. It came with the bolts. I just used some Sika Flex Marine Adhesive or sealant um, to seal it up. 
and it came with all the hardware, and I got that cable from Minijet. So my CDU Spark came with IBR. Uh, there's kind of some pros and cons to that. Um, I guess we'll start with the cons first. Uh, it was very hard to get any information on getting it disabled because uh, it has to be turned off in the ECU. It's not something, it's not an option that's easily turned off. Um, it, and it was a good thing in that <clears throat> it actually came with this bracket here on the outside of the nozzle that actually allowed me to add trim to my uh, mini jet. Um, and I also was able to sell the IBR actuator and make some money back, which lowered the price of my donor. Um, so I'll show you the trim system now. bring it up and show you the handle I made. So that's the trim linkage and it is where it is because I actually used the stock spark steering cable um, and that's how long it was so I kind of got free trim out of it by just running the stock steering cable um, and hooking it up to this outside bracket here. Now, since there is so very little information on disabling IBR, which is an option that's configured here in the computer on the CDU, um, I actually reached out to CanDo, and their technical support department was amazing, and I ended up buying CanDo software, and they helped me get it disabled. Um, so it was the options gone in my CDU, uh, and it doesn't throw any alarms or alerts. And, um, yeah, it was very... Very simple once I figured out who to ask for help. So engine noise was another concern of mine. And I went with Killmat. Uh, the other recommendation was to use Sounddown. Uh, Sounddown I think is a little thicker, uh, maybe a little more high quality than Killmat. Um, but anyway, this is just a rubber uh, sound insulator mat that I have covering the whole hull and the bulkhead. Um, in the engine compartment above the water line, as well as the uh, hatch to the engine compartment. And so my other concern was intake noise. Uh, so the intake here on the front <clears throat> comes out and I was actually able to fit the Sea-Doo Spark air silencer, intake silencer, uh, into my build. I had enough room in the engine compartment here, so I went ahead and put it in. So this is actually the stock Sea-Doo air intake silencer. And the benefit of reusing that, as you can see, is there's the mounting brackets for uh, a whole bunch of the electronic components uh, already in place on it. So I didn't have to build a bunch of mounting brackets. Um, I did have to build a bracket extender to uh, the ECU to move it over because I didn't want to splice these cables. Um, I spliced the main harness in a bunch of spots, but I didn't want to go cutting up uh, all these ECU cables and splicing them just to extend them what's that, three inches maybe? So I just made a bracket to move it over. And so <clears throat> the intake comes out in a tube that I made and comes up into the air silencer and then I put a cane and filter on the end. So another question I had was about mounting the spark pump to uh, the mini jet adapter plate. And the answer to this question was that you actually reuse the um, BRP adapter plate on the back of the CDU, and that's this thing here that sits between the mini jet adapter and the wear ring. Uh, and so that's reused, and it just bolts with three bolts on the inside, and then the pump bolts to that with three bolts on the outside. And then since we're back here, another question I had was about wear rings. Uh, I'm going to be running this in a very rocky uh, river, and it's, this is the nicest it's ever going to look. Uh, it's going to get beat up. Um, very shallow, rocky river. So I didn't know if I should use the plastics uh, one that it came with until it broke or just switch to stainless. And 
uh, mini jet recommended to just switch to stainless, which I did, and uh, I ordered this one from them, and it fit perfect and uh, was finished really nice. So I have a full 4x8 foot sheet of .080 aluminum sheet in here, which is what makes the flooring. Um, there's a dry compartment down there, uh, as well as the tray for the gas tank, uh, and then just a bunch of other components. And it uses the whole sheet. And my question was, uh, <clears throat> what material should I use for the hatch cover and the bulkhead? And Minijet said that they actually use um, plywood on a lot of theirs, and that's what I went with. Super happy with it. Uh, <clears throat> I coated it, it's half inch plywood. So you can see, I actually made a template to cut out the bulkhead and it fit perfect. I left about an eighth inch gap all the way around and then I just welded a bunch of tabs. Uh, but I epoxy coated on both sides of the plywood. So it's epoxy coated before it got paint or kill mat. So it should be, and, um, and I drilled the holes too before I epoxy coated it. So it should be, for the most part, watertight. Uh, and then the hatch cover is also uh, half inch plywood epoxy coated on both sides. It's super durable. I can walk on it. I can jump on it. And um, it's just one inch square of 16th wall tubing. It's very thin tubing that I made the frame with, uh, so it's as light as it could possibly be. All right, so HydroTurf is what I put on here. Uh, and I actually got a, <clears throat> a full roll of the, they called it B-roll, which apparently has some flaws in it, and it's much, much cheaper, and I can't even see any of the flaws. Uh, but I used the whole sheet and got creative to try to fit some pieces in uh, where I wanted it, but it just I couldn't get full sheets to coat it. Um, but it turned out really nice, and I love the color. And Mini Jet, I'm guessing they had some scraps, so when I bought it, they actually had coated the glove box, uh, and it turned out to be the, the same color Hydro Turf that I went with, so it all matches very well. Now the seats I went with, they're actually skid steer seats, all weather outdoor skid steer seats. And um, well, I went with them because I'm gonna be getting in and out of this boat soaking wet the whole time I use it. I didn't want anything nice or fabric. I'll be covered in mud and rocks. And um, I wanted something that was just durable and wouldn't get soaked or muddied or any of that stuff. So um, they have built-in drain plugs. Um, and they're just like a hard vinyl and skid steers and tractors get left out outside in the rain and snow and every other type of weather. So um, I hope that they're going to be durable enough. So I had a Hummingbird Helix 7 uh, side scan sonar system that I wanted to put on here. And um, well, I wanted to get the transducer mounted in a way that, well, it just wouldn't get torn off the bottom of the boat. And I saw this on someone else's video online, and I really like the idea. And it's uh, an adjustable transducer bracket. Uh, and it allows you to basically pull it up so you can run it, and the transducer is protected. Uh, <clears throat> and then when you want to actually use the sonar, you pull it. And I have another pinhole that locks it down, and then it drops it down below the water line so you can run the transducer or the sonar. And the paint uh, is actually an undercoat of a Total Boat Marine uh, top deck paint, uh, which I did not like at all. And I ended up going with basically Rust-Oleum rattle can and doing a spray paint job for camo. And I just used some cut up uh, Japanese maple branches. You can see that pattern. Uh, from a tree in our yard and then some grasses and uh, it turned out great It's very simple to do. I think the paint maybe took me two hours total
all right, so one more thing I wanted to show is how I mounted the uh, CD Spark gauge cluster. There's no easy way to mount it. Um, you can see these four bolt holes here. So, I mean, first I made a template and, uh, you know, I cut out the dash here to match the gauge cluster. Um, and then what I ended up doing, and I'll flip around here to the back, is I made this back plate. Um, I hope that that's light enough back here. I made a back plate, um, and I, I basically sandwiched it, and um, I don't know if you can see, but there is rubber. Yeah, you can see the rubber. It's sandwiched between this thick rubber sheet that I bought. So actually, the gauge cluster, it's tight in there, uh, but it's not plastic on metal. It's sandwiched in the rubber. It's not going anywhere. It's not overly tight. It's just snug down. So it just kind of sandwiched the gauge cluster in there. Uh, that was the only thing I could think of. Um, none of the it was mounted in the CDU in a very odd angle, and none of the um, none of the three bolt holes that were on it would have worked for this at all. At least not that I could come up with. So lastly, a question I had was kind of wondering if my jet ski trailer, which came with the donor, uh, was actually going to fit. And it does. It fits this uh, 10 foot Avenger hull perfectly. Uh, I'm not sure if you could maybe squeeze a bigger one on there, maybe the 11 foot, not sure that would fit or not. Um, maybe you could make it work. But uh, yeah, so this is the 10 foot Avenger hull on a Sea-Doo move trailer. Uh, and the trailer specs work out great for it. And uh, yeah, it fits great. So I did want to give a big thank you to Jamie at Minijet and his whole team at Minijet. Uh, I really couldn't have done this without him, or I could have, but it would have taken me a lot longer. Uh, he was there to answer questions uh, pretty much any time I had him. So, you know, he sold me a top quality product. I was beyond impressed at the weld quality and build quality of the haul that I got. This was a welded haul. So they put it together for me uh, and delivered the empty shell. And I finished it uh, and so yeah every question um, some of them I answered in this quick video um, but a lot of questions I had that he was just there to answer and uh, I was just I couldn't believe the, the support that I got and I see a bunch of people saying the exact same thing uh, and it's definitely true I wouldn't hesitate to buy another one from him and uh, if you're looking for one he's the guy to talk